Good morning everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, before the video starts, yes, here's a few references of medication in terms of coccidiosis that I'm referring to, um, that you can use that I did not mention in the video. And also you'll see there is a referral to a DVD OptiPint up from Derek Streak. So, and also a study that, I, that um, you can reference um, in terms of the nutritional value and the actual mineral content of termite mounts. Uh, enjoy your day and thanks Good for watching. Good morning everyone. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, it's today April the 10th. Um, it is now 40 days exactly before our first main race. Um, we are having a mock race um, um, on the 16th of May. Um, we, we, at the club we've decided we're going to have our own little race outside of the union races. Um, and that is just to test all our clocks and see that everything works. Um, and that will be from Wolmeranstadt. So for us it's about 260 odd kilometers. So it's not a very long race, but um, it also means the time is running out. So at the moment I'm feeling a bit nervous. We haven't um, tossed our pigeons yet. Um, I'm delaying it this year as much as I can, within reason, allowing the birds to mature uh, a little bit um, as long as possible. But uh, most importantly, there are some that are still going through the body mold and are still molting some of the tails. So I want as many of them ready to be tossed as possible at the same time. Um, the plan is also not to toss the um, uh, young 2024 birds right away. So we're going to keep them back and let them mature a little bit more. Later on we will then um, toss them and they will join the sprint races late in the season. So to prepare them for, the, for next year's season. So the goal with the 2024 pigeons, I've got about 18 or 20. Um, is not to, to raise them a lot but just to give them a bit of experience and I believe that might give us a bit of an edge next year um, if you have 20 birds that's ahead of um, the pack because they are basically all birds by that time when we do raise them but um, that's yet to be determined how effective that will be okay so quickly we're gonna go I just want to discuss two things that um, we have done um, I made a video on Sunday but for some reason I delete it and it didn't work out but Sunday was a, um, a rest day we had open loft for the pigeons and um, we did our normal thing we mixed our water and the uh, milk and the vinegar and we fed of which we've already spoken about um, so there's just two things that I want to discuss the first thing that we did also is we added to our grid um, termite nest so this might seem a bit odd but this is something that I learned from my grandfather way back in the day um, so this is the termite nest that you find um, in the fields um, and this is the f made from the red sand so I always get this um, the red sand termite nest um, the reason we give this is because uh, termite only builds its nest in virgin soil it will not use contaminated soil with pesticides and other toxins in it and from um, deep down the earth you've got all sorts of minerals that we can't even think of that the pigeons actually do need and enjoy um, because remember in, in, in nature this is also what they do and where they get their minerals from and it also has natural salts within the earth and I believe that it's very beneficial to the the pigeons there was a program years back that I watched um, it's actually a video it was still on VHS um, at the time and it's made into DVD from Derek Streak um, now this is years and years back in the uh, uh, late 90s early 2000 I think um, and the video's name is Opti Pintaf and in this video he also describes um, that if you have a garden you can put some of the soil, have a piece of soil there where the pigeons can actually eat some of the soil. And there was a story, and, and, and you can phone um, Diamond Pigeon Stud, I think they still have that um, DVD available, 
uh, it's very good to watch. It's a bit old, so things have changed since, but there's a lot of proof and a lot of helpful things in there. So I really recommend watching Derek Streaks of the Pint Off. And there you can find a Diamond Pigeon stuff, just to give some credit. Um, but in that, he tells a story of a man, a fancier, that he dug a swimming pool um, in his yard during the racing season. And there was a whole pile of red soil in his yard. Um, and the pigeons was eating it. And he had the best season of his, of his career. But he didn't take any notice. Obviously, the swimming pool got finished. And the next year, he, um, he the, the, there wasn't any soil and he had a, a worse season. And then he spoke to his son and they thought about what was different last year. And they realized that there was the red soil. Um, so they dug up some more in the garden and they let the pigeons eat it. And they had a fantastic um, season again. So whether or not that's just coincidence, um, I don't know, but I do believe that the um, thermite nest actually helps. And you'll see it's it's quite hard. And uh, the only thing we do is we, we basically, um, we mix it with our normal grit. And you can just, I'm just going to do it over here because I've already made. You can just crush it lightly. And then it makes these little crumbs that's the size of your grit, maybe a little bit finer. And you mix it with your grit um, and then they will actually eat it quite nicely or you can um, just when they have open locked have a section of the on the concrete or whatever that they can actually eat it okay so i'm gonna not drag this out too long it is bitterly cold today um, i said to my son uh, you can feel the pigeon season in the air now as soon as it gets cold and you have to wear a jersey outside i know the pigeon season is is close so exciting times so the other thing, and it was quite wet the last two days, so I just wanted to speak about uh, something that um, can be a problem in the wet weather. Um, and that is what we say in, in Afrikaans, I've got my notes here, um, coxidose. Okay. Um, so coccidiosis is a big problem, especially in wet weather. So I'm just going to take this note of mine, so I don't forget something. It's a big... Um, cause of um, poor performance um, that's the case where the pigeon suddenly gets very thin and you get that V shape and the, and the breastbone actually comes through they tend to have diarrhea you'll see the, the, the droppings it starts getting very very loose um, and you know they get that thing that we all know is going light especially in the young pigeons they suddenly go light and they die and then you also find that in the very young pigeons, the, the keel, it bends or it misforms. And coccidiosis causes um, pigeons to have less of a calcium absorption. Um, and it's because of the calcium absorption, it actually affects the keel bone. Some pigeons are born with a skew or a dented keel, but it can also uh, be caused by coccidiosis. So... Uh, okay, how does it spread? Um, the eggs get um, discarded by the pigeon through its digestive system. And the ideal climate where coccidiosis actually breeds is when it's warm, humid, um, and then they grow up. And then the pigeon will actually eat the eggs, it will grow, and then the um ach, not the eggs but the the the, the, the the bacteria will grow within that um, conditions so the main source of it is also um bad um loft hygiene if you do have a deep litter which is fine it should be dry bone dry at all times as soon as you have a moist wet loft um that's very bad news for a for a, um, a deep litter system and then also your dirty baskets in which you toss or even in the club um, is, a, is a, a source of the of the condition okay so how do we um, uh, prevent it from coming so keep your loft clean keep your baskets clean 
Um, when it's wet weather, be especially careful. Make sure your pigeons. It's fine if a pigeon sleeps, uh, flies in the in the rain. It's got no real problem there. But don't let your pigeons sleep on the perches and go into the loft. We give them chance to dry off. Um, and then you can disinfect your um, loft with things like Verconess or any kind of uh, bleach middle. Um, how do we treat it? <coughs> There's a few things that we can give. Um, so, this, uh, uh, what do we call it? Sulfas, Amprol, tri Trioxine. Um, and there's quite a few um, treatments available, um, so you can you can do that. And even the uh, seven in ones or the four in ones uh, from from uh, diamond pigeon stud you can use as well. Um, I find it to be quite um, helpful. But you would think that I'm sponsored by them by any chance? I'm not. I just I'm a big fan of Derek Streak and his products and his methods. So. But I'm not sponsored by them. So yeah, the big thing is that I'm talking about there's a lot of pro uh, products to to treat coccidiosis, but the thing is to be aware and how it breeds out and to look out for it. I think that's the most uh, thing. So when you are going to treat it, um, something like Apertex, uh, one tablet per pigeon, then you get Dermatin powder, five gram for a liter of water. Um, so there's a few things that you can actually do and then some of these things you'll struggle to find but one thing that um, I've always used and effectively for coccidiosis is the chicken treatment, embersin. Um So if you find that you have an em uh, coccidiosis uh, outbreak, you can give embersin. that's what I do, um, give it for at least uh, three to five days. And as a preventative measure, especially if you have humid weather, um, you can give it once a week um, to prevent coccidiosis. Yeah, so that is that is pretty much that I've got on the pretty much all that I've got on the on the list today. Um, so I just want to show you one last thing, and we're gonna say goodbye. Um, I've got a pigeon in my hospital. We've got a pigeon hospital here. I've got one in ICU. I just want to see if it's still alive. So you. You guys can join me just to show you. We all get sick pigeons, and we all try to fix some of them if we can. Um, it's not a case that you know everyone has got these fantastic pigeons who never get sick. Yes, you get those pigeons, but the, the guy that tells you that he never gets any sick pigeons or any problems in his loft, he never have to give any medicine whatsoever. I will take that with a pinch of salt. Yes, we try to do it a bit as natural as possible, but. Um, yeah, we all have sick pigeons, so come let's have a look at the, at the girlie in, uh, in the hospital. So, welcome, welcome to the pigeon hospital. It's okay, the camera really says here. Uh, okay, so here you see, um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wards and one patient at the moment. And this one, we've, I believe, it got quite a type for it. And what's strange, this is actually an old bird. It's a very good stock bird. And it's the first time she actually got sick. So this is very worrisome. Sorry, girlie. I just want to take her out. Yeah, there's a little bit of So here we go. Um, as you can see, look at the breastbone, she's quite thin, she's feeling much better and a bit more lively than what she was um, a few days ago. So what we did was we actually treated her with an amoxicillin tablet, 250 milligram, which is quite strong. Um, and we isolated her so she's alone in this cage here. And um, you'll see it's a wire floor. I just give a brick so she can actually have a nice place to perch on. Um, but that's for the droppings to fall through that she doesn't have to sit and if you look at the floor now she messed the food as well look how loose those droppings are those are typical paradise for eight
uh, droppings. So we did vaccinate there for Paramixo um, also, just in case, but that doesn't seem to be the problem. There's definitely an issue. So I'm going to give it a few more days and see how it goes and we'll keep you updated. So unfortunately, if she doesn't get rid of this um, after the treatment, uh, she will have to be removed from the system. But um, we'll first try and cure her. Okay. All right, guys. Um, join in tomorrow for another video and I thank you for all the guys that supporting my channel and um, please drop a comment and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you.